In this video, we are going to discuss five important components of online teaching. I call it five systems because I want you to make these five things as your habit when you are teaching K-12 students. There are certain aspects due to which K-12 teaching is different than the commercial online teaching. I am not going to discuss those things because this video is focused on K-12 teaching. And we are starting right after this short break. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Tahir and if this is your first time, please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video on this channel every Tuesday and Friday. Today we are going to discuss five core components for online teaching as a K-12 teacher. And the first thing is your lecture creation process. Then we will discuss the lecture delivery system. The third important component we are going to discuss today is the communication system and there are three types of communication I am going to discuss in this video. The fourth important factor which we are going to discuss is the feedback system which you must keep in place in order to be successful. And the last thing which is also very important for online teaching is the resource system. How you organize your teaching resources and if you watch this video till the end I'm going to show you some of the very important websites and tools which you can use to be successful online teacher. And you might have not heard about some of these websites, but they are very useful and you can find some free online resources on these websites. So stay till the end. Now let's talk about the first thing, your lecture creation process. There are many ways you can create a lecture. But before you do that, you must understand that there are certain easy methods than others. And if you adopt a route for a very difficult uh, lecture creation process, then you might not be able to deliver the contents in time because there is a rush for online teacher to create contents quickly. And due to this current crisis, it is very critical that teachers must act fast. And the teachers who are not doing these activities of content creation efficiently may lose their job. So this is a risk for you. So therefore, you have to make a decision that which route you are going to take for online teaching. For example, let's say you are good at PowerPoint. Then you should create your lectures in PowerPoint. And whether it's a synchronous delivery, uh, which means the real-time delivery or it is a asynchronous delivery, you can use your PowerPoint lectures in both situations. So PowerPoint is a very powerful application, but sometimes you don't need your lectures in PowerPoint. You can do this very easily by using a PDF or by using Google Documents or Google Slides, which is an alternative to PowerPoint. So one form of online teaching is called flipped classroom. So one of the ways you can do a flipped classroom is that uh, you create a video uh, about that topic which you are going to teach and then you put this video on your learning management system. Students watch those videos and then when they are online with you, you ask them to perform certain activities. So in this situation, what you will do is you have to create two types of resources. One is for the topic which you are going to teach and the other for activities. This is a very good way of engaging students because what happens is that when you are delivering lectures, sometimes you start acting like a television and when you are watching TV, you are not supposed to respond. So this is the problem which is happening with online teaching right now. Student engagement is the biggest problem. I also have a video uh, 10 tips about student engagement which you might want to watch. I will put a link here or otherwise you can find on my channel. So student engagement is very important. So therefore you decide a lecture which is easy for you to create and which ensures some at least some student engagement. Another way of creating lecture is curating other contents because there are a lot of contents available for primary and high school students. And uh, there are certain websites which I'm going to mention later in this video, which you can use to curate contents. And content curation means that you are using uh, other people's content in an appropriate way without violating the copyrights. For example, you can put a link to a YouTube video uh, by using a particular application such as Edpuzzle and then you can create your lectures in this way. You are delivering synchronously, real time, but during the lecture, you can ask students to watch a particular 
piece of video and then you can also put some questions inside that video. I also have a separate video about add puzzle application which you can watch. But the important thing is that you must decide a process and the better way to decide is that make a small PDF for yourself and on that PDF you write your process that okay my lecture creation process is this. So you put that in your PDF which is only for you and you follow that because with the time you will get better and you might have to fine tune uh, your process of creating lectures. Now this was the first system you have to put in place. The second important system is lecture delivery system. How you are going to deliver the lectures. And one way is to use the video conferencing software which is the easiest way and currently most of the online teachers uh, who have never done this before they are following this route that they are just using a video conferencing software such as, uh, such as Zoom or Webex or Google Hangouts Meet and they are delivering the contents. In my opinion this is not a good way and I also have made a video about this topic uh, because there are certain limitations of video conferencing software. Uh, when you are teaching primary or high school st uh, students you have to give the assignments, you have to give some quizzes, you have to provide some group discussions and other activities. So all these activities are not possible in all video conferencing softwares. Therefore, you must use a learning management system in my opinion. But even if you are using a video conferencing software, you must set a process that okay, I am doing this in this particular manner, whatever is your uh, step by step procedure. So you must put this system in place as well. Now the third important thing is the communication. So communication is important because of various reasons. The most important thing here is that your instructions must be very clear. You must define a very clear objectives, very clear learning outcomes for your student, must provide a list of expectations, what they are, uh, they are going to expect in your course. Then there are three forms of interactions. One is between teacher to student, one is between student to student and the other is between student to contents because the online teaching is student focused and most of the time student can also learn at their own pace. Although there is a synchronous component where teacher have to uh, go face to face in real time but students have the opportunity to learn at their own pace because the resources are available in cloud and they can access those resources anytime. So online teaching is student centered not the teacher. You must also provide a clear instruction for students how to consume your contents. Then you must also provide some opportunities for students to collaborate with each other. For example, group discussions. Sometimes in some software they are called uh, group boards or discussion boards. But essentially these are the places where students communicate with one another. Why it is important? Because there are certain types of high level thinking which cannot happen in isolation. When student is uh, studying alone, uh, there are certain things. For example, uh, when they are discussing, they learn how to disagree with other students. They learn how to reach at a consensus with other students. They learn how to compromise in uh, practical life. These, these are very important skills. These are high level thinking skills. And students must acquire these skills as a result of your uh, teaching online. So, therefore, you must provide them opportunity uh, to discuss in groups, discussion boards or whatever you call it. Now the fourth important system is feedback. Now when I say feedback, most of the time uh, people think that feedback means that you should get feedback uh, about your course from student and providing a survey at the end of your course is enough. No. Feedback is a continuous process. For example, you have given an assignment to your students and students submit back the assignment. You check the assignment, you provide a one sentence feedback to your student. Now, this is not a good approach. What you should do instead is you should send an email to all of your students that I am providing this feedback to your assignment. But if you are expecting some other feedback or you are expecting feedback in any particular area which I have not provided to you, please let me know and I will provide that particular feedback to you. So when you send this email to students, no students have the opportunity to ask question. 
Now you are giving them the opportunity to give them the feedback which they want because they sometimes want a feedback from you. But the feedback which you are providing is not relevant. They don't want this thing. They want some other important thing to know from you. So because the focus is again the learning to get the outcome, the outcome of the course. Student must go from level 1 to level 2 as a result of your teaching. Otherwise you are a failed teacher. So therefore this is very important that you set a feedback system. Then it is also important that you take the survey. I didn't say that you don't take uh, feedback about your uh, teaching capabilities. You must ask students at the end of your course or in the middle of your course maybe two or three times about uh, uh, your teaching style and you ask questions in a way which help you to understand what are the problems. What are the areas where students are facing some difficulties? Now the last important component which I would like to discuss in this video is how you organize online resources for your students in particular for K-12 students. Now there are many websites where you can get some resources and these websites I have placed here on this uh, list as you can see these are all places where you can get free resources for your courses. Some have creative common licenses. Now for example if you deliver your contents using Classflow. Classflow has a big library of uh, free resources which you can use. If you provide your contents using Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle has a library of uh, resources. You can also put YouTube videos there. OER also has open educational resources. In CK12 you have a lot of uh, free textbooks and videos which you can use in your courses. So uh, make sure that you have the uh, proper license to use them. But there are a lot of websites. So explore these websites, find some resources and tell your students how to use them. And there are various types of resources. A resource can be a PDF, resource can be a Word document, resource can be an image. A resource can also be a website with a very relevant and important post for example. So you must gather these resources before the start of your course or at least one week before the delivery. Now again the most important thing is that that you should not overwhelm with all these activities. These are not very time consuming activities. These are very simple activities and you must meet the deadlines because you are a K-12 teacher. So I hope that you like this video and if so please give it a thumbs up and share with your colleagues who might be interested in this video and all other my videos which are linked in this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.